Hello and welcome to another episode of the What Would You Change Movie Podcast. We are the Super Monkey Fighters. I'm here with Papa Nugget and Monkey Feathers. I, of course, am Loki. Hi, everybody. Hey! This week, we are going through the 1984 classic. It's the movie Gremlins, which, if you don't know the story, it is a young man inadvertently breaks three important rules concerning his new pet and unleashes a horde of malevolent, mischievous monsters on a small town. It's directed by Joe Dante, written by Chris Columbus. Also, it, the movie stars uh, Zach Galligan, Phoebe Cates, Hoyt Axton, uh, Key Luke is in there, uh, Corey Feldman is in this. Um, let's see who else. Judge Reinhold shows up in this, um, as well as, I forget his name, but. Uh, Another amazing early appearance from Mike from Breaking Bad. He's the deputy in this. I've seen this movie way too many times. I think we watched it with the kids like a couple of weeks ago even. Um, and it's fun. It's goofy. But it's really slow to get into. But once it gets into it, I think it's really amazing and hilarious. Like, I forgot how funny it is to see little gremlin puppets being dragged around on things. Or riding <laughs> tricycles. Or... That's... that's... <laughs> the movie that's yeah. that's what makes this movie <laughs> well and i think that's why gremlins 2 works is because they do just more of those things like mm -hmm. gremlins 2 i think is better than this it's, it's a sequel that's better than the original because it just takes what the original did well and just does that the entire time <laughs> but every time there's a random little gremlin that pops up like the mugger one was my favorite he's got the little ski mask on and he's got the gun <laughs> that one was great <laughs> and yeah just the chainsaw when the chainsaw is dragging the the stripe the, the bleeder away that I I laughed out loud I didn't just lol I laughed out loud <laughs> those are my favorite things about this I mean it's good that it does things that uh, like it, trying to build the tension but it spends like an hour trying to build tension and then yeah um, another thing I actually really really did like um, which is kind of weird that I like it in what I'm going to say, but it flips a switch, right? The gremlins, like it goes from like, Oh, what are these little things to, we need to start murdering everything really fast, especially Billy's mom. Like <laughs> the eggs hatch. She has no idea what's going on. The audience does. Cause we've already seen the, the everything that went on at the school with the, the teacher and that, but Billy's mom goes from, I'm curious about these things to I'm going to commit war crimes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's like, what is this thing? Oh, it stuck its face in my blender. Durr, there it goes. I, I, I think it's all the uh, pent up emotion between her and her husband and their and his relationship. So she's taking yep. it, taking it out on the gremlins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he puts one in the microwave. Um, <laughs> he just straight up stabs one a bunch. Like it's, it's, it's vicious. I like she has no idea what these things are. She's like, oh, there's this little green monster. It's got to die. <laughs> and there you go. I don't know, like I said. I think. But well, to be fair, if, like. if there was a little green monster in your house, wouldn't like what would your first instinct be to do with it? I don't know. Not blend it. <laughs> <laughs> But if you had the opportunity, well, if the opportunity to opportunity blend presents it. Itself. <laughs> if, if it had attacked me, I may have blended it. But at that point, I was just like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> you know, it's two and a half feet tall, maybe. If an animal gets into my house, my first thought isn't put it in the microwave, right? So, I, Then you're I, a living yeah, life wrong, apparently. You're, I don't you're think... Not... <laughs> yeah, I don't think my first reaction would be, you know, murder. <laughs> But, I don't know. It was 1984. The world was a different place back then. It is slow getting into it, um, but it's fast enough that it, it it still keeps your attention throughout it. Um, because, like, early on, like, it's about discovery. Like, what the hell yeah. is a gremlin? Like, what is this thing? And so it, it keeps you just, like, step by step moving to that progression to what ultimately happens with all the antics in the end um and i mean like they they incorporate like a love story into it but like that has nothing to do with like the point of the show like they sprinkle some yeah. other 
elements in there, but who cares? Yeah. Like that's not like, why that's not why I watch this. Yeah. Um but yeah, it's it's all about just trying to to figure out what's going to happen. They established the three rules early on and they repeat it multiple times to make sure that you understand ooh, something bad might happen if you don't follow the rules. And yeah. then so you're wondering like, well, what will happen? When well, and, and you, and you know that the three rules are going to get broken. Yeah, because but you don't know what's going to happen when you break them. So they kind of they set the stage for that and then let it unfold. Um, but yeah, I'm, it, it's funny because it's like it's like, what kind of movie is this? It's like it's like labeled as like a horror fantasy horror comedy. It's like, yeah. it, it's horror. I wouldn't say it's horror. At all, but it's also but for kids. I I think it it appeals to to people on a level that like on any level, I guess that it's just yeah. it's a fun movie that like it's it's it's, it's what not movies... meant to be taken seriously. Yeah, and it's just to have a good time. Yeah, it's it's entertainment. It's it's not life changing. I think there's a time when people try and make movies that are gonna affect the world or change people's and it's like, no, this is just a good time. And that's, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think they do a really good job with that. I'll start out by saying this movie is a lot darker than I think I remembered it being. It's the eighties. It's the eighties. I I know. (laughs) That's as happy as things got in 1984. (laughs) Cause we established 1984 is when things started to get better. Oh, Okay. (laughs) It's just kind of, it was surprising considering this is a movie for kids, Mm -hmm. but then you throw in the darker elements like, you know, the mother going war criminal, uh, war crimes (laughs) on these creatures, and the fact that the teenage girl's dad died in it. that's a really dark turn for this. I hate Christmas. Why? I can't tell you in the later. Yeah, that was a terrible story. Yeah, like what what it, bearing it, did that have on the 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 plot in any way other than just like just, okay, uh <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to start out by saying, yeah, it's a lot darker than I would mm-hmm. call it being. But I'll say I'll, I'll I'll keep aside from a chorus that it's funny, you know, the comedic with the little gremlin puppets being dragged everywhere. I think the part that I found was kind of entertaining is the army of gremlins as they're shuffling along the street and then they're all like flying over each other. I found it comical. I guess snow doesn't count as water either. Yeah. Don't 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 try and get in the details. (laughs) (laughs) I liked the creature design overall. I mean, I think that having an intellectual character creatures that are interacting with humans as well as understanding what is being said and they can then replicate speech I guess because they'll say little words here and there that is being said like gizmo and yeah things like that so I found the creature design fairly well done considering it's the 80s so I liked that element of it and the fact that you did have two different creatures, one that was a good and it's cute and it's adorable. And then when you, when you feed it after midnight, it turns into this angry, cranky, other demon-like creature. So I did like the creature design. Yeah. I, I don't know, the, the, the Mogwai have always been a weird like oh it's fuzzy so it's cute but it's got a really creepy looking nose and the ears are kind of off-putting and it's like so you know it's kind of i I, you know i had the toys growing up i had all that kind of stuff i've watched a bunch but this time especially the nose in the the mogwai really stood out the like gross wet dog nose but that also was just open holes like i just yeah yeah no the creature design the special effects there's there's one time where you know, kind of unavoidable, I think, for the time. It's when the mother is stabbing the one in the kitchen. You can see the, the wires. metal wire that's holding the arms up for the puppets. Like, you know, there's a couple of those little things, but 
the claymation scenes when they're walking down the street, you know. But again, technical limitations of the time and those kinds of things. I mean, for everything else that they did, I think they did as well as they could have. It's forgivable, I think. It's not like it's 2009 special effects, you know, Matrix Revolutions, like let's make everything CG and look bad now instead of doing the practical <laughs> effects we did in the original one. What do you guys think of the uh, the inventor dad and all his little gadgets? I think they're fun little things. I, I, but this time I think it kind of... it. I wanted to get into the grim, the grim ones more, and that seemed more like a distraction. <laughs> like, they spend as much time building those little gags as they could have. That's like, just do that with gremlins and rather than do those. But it's interesting things, I think. Weird stuff that people think of. I don't know. I think they just needed to be able to create a story around the characters. It's just another element. I'm sure they could have changed it and done it differently. Um, and it probably wouldn't have changed the overall movie that much. But I, I feel like they, they, they tried and set it up that it just like makes them more memorable, I guess. Like, uh, yeah, I think that's what they were going for was, yeah, memorable. Because because it's like, yeah, all this stuff that he's invented it's like like none of them are practical well most of them aren't most of them aren't practical and so that's what makes it stand out um or they're way ahead of their time like the remote control phone (laughs) your hands-free phone set like you know speaker phone that's that's what we've got now and he invented uh an orange juicer like i'm pretty sure they probably had those in the 80s already yeah also he's a coffee maker somehow like makes more more orange juice produces, than one. yeah <laughs> there's a lot of orange juice for one orange <laughs> maybe it already came pre-packaged with oranges in it that's why that, that's, that's why it wasn't working properly that's probably why it wasn't working that well anyways because you overstuffed it with oranges without realizing it yeah they never it's cleaned been, it out <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, yeah and everything's sludge like Everything in this movie is sludge. Like the coffee came out of sludge. The orange juice eventually was sludge. The the mogwai spit was sludge. <laughs> like, it was all really kind of goopy and gross. So I don't know if this is a like or a dislike, but the a moment transition. when the mother is at the top of the stairs and she sees the hatched eggs and then the music starts playing. Like that hold on her reaction is, I don't know, painfully long, like uh-huh. uh, uncomfortably long. And she's just like, and it's like, what the, like it give it's long enough that you get to the point, like, like what's going on? Like it yeah. should have cut by now. Like, why is she still making faces? <laughs> and I wasn't sure if like the music was music of the movie or music or that was, she was hearing. And yeah. so I'm like, this is like a really weird cut. Yeah, there's there's a <laughs> lot of those kinds of things. And that's where like the first part of the movie to me really drags is because of those things where you're like, okay, we get it. Can we let's let's move on to the next scene? Like, oh, oh, oh no, you're still you're still holding here. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um because even the opening when the dad's in the, the shop talking to the 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 Chinese guy who owns the um the Mogwai, like Mm-hmm. It's he's talking to them, trying to sell him his little gadget, his little pocket bathroom thing or whatever it is. Um, bathroom buddy, and they're just they're just not even responding to him. Like he's saying things, and they're just like, like why are you here? Like, it feels like they were the, the direction was he's going to talk. <laughs> you guys don't say anything. They're like okay, <laughs> and then he's trying to interact with them, and it's like. This is weird. And then he keeps looking over his shoulder because he keeps hearing the noise from the Mogwai. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, that just takes a long time. And then they redo a lot of stuff as well. There's two separate instances where they turn into gremlins because one of them goes to the school and somehow gets food while the other ones get food. And it's like, why are we doing two of these? Let's just have like once maybe. I don't know. But yeah, no, that's that's my big complaint with this movie is that it just drags a lot of that stuff on where... All right, I got it. Let's move forward into the into the comedy. <laughs> the whole premise behind this movie, the three rules. It it's a huge 
plot hole. Because the instance with water. What counts as water? Because the dog licked Gizmo's ear, so That's does saliva. that count? But it's still water, <laughs> though. And is it's it snow. just water or yeah. it's snow? That's water. Does that not count? Or is it just water and no other liquids? So what happens if you spilled a Coke on it? Is it fine? Can you well, give it... The dirty like paintbrush that? water? That wasn't just water. It had paint in it. But There's that so... Yeah, or the, is, the concept of food, where mm-hmm. you can't feed it after midnight. Well, it's midnight somewhere in the world, so how does time right. zones work? Well, and or when even does it, sunlight. Like... like after midnight it's always after midnight when does it become like do you have to wait until noon like what's and my problem with that is it's easily remedied by saying don't feed them after dark something like that yeah makes it a little bit difficult more difficult for how he got tricked into feeding them right because they unplugged his alarm clock so he thought it was earlier than it was but it's yeah it's one of those just kind of ambiguous rules where you're just like i'm not sure like just go with it shh just don't don't think it's one of those moments in movies yeah, <laughs> yeah except the whole idea is that you have these three rules you can't basically break them but it's hard to not break them yeah. so how are these creatures even on earth considering it's there's sunlight oh Everywhere, i don't know always they're locked in yeah. a box well, by a chinaman that's oh. it's it's also you know, like it's the vampire problem, right? Where moonlight isn't the moon doesn't generate light; it reflects light from the sun. <laughs> so it's it's all sunlight. But I yeah. So what it's, counts? Yeah, and that and I get that this is just supposed to be a fun kids campy movie, and you're supposed to just laugh at the comedic of it. But it's kind of hard to overlook the three rules that are the plot of this movie. It's hard to overlook when it's, you know, easily remedied by just explaining it a little bit more or making the rules just slightly different, right? Yeah, but, but if it, you it really is just a, it, then yeah. it, it's harder to sell as, like, a kid's movie. And honestly, but if you, as a kid's movie, like, there's, like, a 15-minute bar scene and... <laughs> <laughs> there's a flasher. There's, yeah. there's a mugger. There's alcohol. There's... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's to be fair, it's PG, right? So it's parental guidance, but it's That's, still like there's, <laughs> you know, there's there's kind of a lot going on. There's murder. There's, <laughs> you know, you know yeah. like I said, like I said they, earlier, they also, this movie's they also so much darker tell you than you Santa's not real in it, right? Like, <laughs> there's no beating around the bush on that one. Like, go watch this one, kids. We're gonna tell you Santa's not real. <laughs> like, well, and we're also going to tell you in. A very horrific way, <laughs> the same way that the main character learned, or one of the characters learned, you know, because her dad climbed down the chimney and died. <laughs> so it's pretty horrendous. So, um, so for me, one of the big things I disliked was kind of how they set up a lot of these little storylines at the beginning that all just kind of went out the window by the time once, the gremlins attacked. Once like, the gremlins it's started, it's like we're, we're 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 building these things up. We're building, you know, like the old lady who owns the town. Right? Yeah. Who's yeah. the Wicked Witch of the West, right? She just butts in line in front of everybody and they all just let her. Like, and even the the, the bank teller, he's just like, all right, well, I guess I'll do what you're telling me to do because you're mm-hmm. the rich lady who owns the town. I was like, if any one person just stood up to her, it wouldn't have been a problem. Like, yeah. But it's also... The, 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 the fact with her that she's basically talking about, I'm going to murder your dog. Yeah. Is that legal? Hey. Is but those are things like, because I mean, even the conflict between Billy and I don't even know the guy's name. Um, yeah. Andrew or other, something like that. Or other Gerald, ba- Gerald, other, other banker. Yeah. Judge Reinhold's character. Like he just, he's kind of there for a couple of scenes and then he's gone. And then like, there's no resolution with him and like the yeah. bank manager, it's kind of the same thing. Like, you know, they kind of build up these little things like, Oh, something's going to happen. And then even with the old lady, it's like, I guess it makes you like what happened to her because you hate her because of her character because she goes flying out the window from the hot wire Mm -hmm. stair climber thing. But hilarious scene, 
but I think it also wouldn't, I, I think it would have been just as impactful if we didn't know who that was. It was just some random old cat lady. Like, you know, she went from this vicious, mean character to pathetic cat lady who then gets flung out a window and then the <laughs> cops just don't care. <laughs> the yeah. cops are driving through the town. They're just like, like oh, well, let's that lady's leave. dead. All right. Oh, look, that guy's <laughs> is getting attacked by monsters. Should we help him? Nah, let's just roll the window up. Like, yeah, you know, there's those kinds of things where you're just like, okay, that's, I, you know, it, it's entertaining, but it's like, I think that's what I wanted more of in the movie was just that ridiculousness and not building up a bunch of stuff that you just don't really do. Like, you know, it could have been that the gremlins were brought some resolution to that or they ran into like the, the other banker dude and he didn't save the girl. He's, you know, like knocked her down to get away and then Billy had to save her. Like you do just do something like that. Like, don't just, hey, this is the guy who's who's the popular actor for the time or a popular actor for the time. We've got him in our movie. We've got two days to film with him. Just throw him in a couple of scenes and let's be done with it. Like, that's really what it felt like. And so, you know, you're building up a bunch of stuff and there's like nobody really seems to care too much that there's murder. Like, hey, the high school science teacher was murdered under his desk. Well, I guess I'll wrap a bandage around my hand because I got scratched and run home. Like, don't <laughs> tell anybody. Don't call the police. <laughs> Don't <laughs> you know, even when he's talking to the police, he's like, there's monsters. Like, let's go find the dead uh, science. Teacher yeah, there's there's a dead body. Like, leave with that. <laughs> yeah, there's there's evidence of these things. It's like once it's done, the character's out and you're gone. I think that's, you know, that's my big issue and complaint. I, I, it's kind of my transition with my, my dislike is the changes. I would have just put gremlins from the get go. Like simple premise. Here, let's get into it. I like the setup, but I would have just, you know, that's 20 minutes, half an hour out of the movie, and then an hour of... It could be a little of, shorter. Of shenanigans, of, of gremlin shenanigans, you know. That's what I would have done with the movie. That's my change. I would just rewrite the rules. And not not completely, but just make them more logical. Specific. In a, well, not necessarily even specific, but just simplify it, because... As Loki had mentioned, instead of after midnight, just after dark. Hey, if it's sunlight, just make it bright lights. And I I get that the sunlight was the mechanism that was used to kill Stripe in the end, so they yeah. had to make it so that sunlight but, was what killed you. Like even but, with after dark, it's like when is it dark? Yeah. Yeah. I but that's still the struggle, is it just when you break down the rules and you start looking at it more critically, it tends to fall apart. Because bright lights, okay, what counts as bright lights? Are they ever going to be out of a box? Because the premise is you guys don't have the, you guys aren't ready to take care of Mogwais. Okay, well, how, how is anyone ever going to be able to take care of them anyway? Because you can't let them out of a box. So they... Yeah. What are they going to do? Live in live in a cave forever, in a in a basement for their whole lives. So, yeah, it would be hard to figure out how to change it, but just when you start looking at the rules a little bit more critically, it tends to well, and it's even guess, like after flat. after midnight. But yeah, what constitutes when it's okay? Like between midnight and sunrise. There you go. Like in the time zone know, that you're in. In the time zone that you're in. Like it's, 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 it's relevant on the light kind of a thing, right? The bright light kills them. The dark light, it gives them, you know, they're okay. And kind of a thing. So I don't know. I, I, I agree. Like, I don't know how I would, the, the, I don't know what specifics I would give it, but I would, you know, adjust that at least the don't feed them after midnight one. Or even just the water situation. Cause if it snows, does the snow not count as water or is it just it pure water? Yeah. If Does it's it have if to it's be distilled, you talked about the dirty paintbrush water. Well, eh, or the dog lick in the ear. It's still water. It's saliva, but it's still water. So what counts as the the ingredient that turns these into reproducing machines? Well, I think so, that one. The, the change would be more of for me on that one. I think would that would make more sense is like don't let them touch alcohol. Because water is too abundant and too too available, but alcohol 
like oh well they they get drunk they turn into crazy monsters right like it it kind of you know something like that where it's 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 not as likely of a thing or you know a necessity for life like how, how are you going to do the whole pool scene and like the town's got a a brewery and that's the old lady's owns the brewery and she's ruining everybody's life that way but he falls in the to the the fermenter that the the fermenter yeah and then when she goes up the stairs she goes flying through a window into the vat see see we've Uh, already made a better movie that that would be a better movie Yeah, all right. Um, Nugget, do you have any <laughs> changes that'd be better than what we just came up with? I don't know if I can top that. Um, <laughs> I mean, overall, I don't think I have a lot of changes. I have a hard time really criticizing this movie too much yeah, I, just because it is what it is. Um, and, yeah, it's one of those movies that I'm okay with just going along for the ride and not really stressing about the details yeah um the suspension of disbelief is really easy with this one yeah it's, yeah so I, I i like that it's 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 one of those movies that you can do that and i feel like there's not a lot of movies these days that like fit into this category yeah I, especially i i don't know i was thinking about that too like how would you make this movie these days and would audiences even care? Would they be bored throughout the first half because there's not stuff going? Yeah, I don't know. I think we'll wrap this one up there. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know what you guys think about Gremlins and specifically what you think of our, our major change in the brewery. Brewery Gremlins. <laughs> brewery Gremlins. <laughs> Old lady falling into a... yeah. Do the fermenter vats or the gremlins falling in there and pouring out the tap or something like that. I don't know. (laughs) But leave your comments down below and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios. See ya.